Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to cover some really basic stuff related to how to focus manually on a Nikon D750. And so if you're an experienced photographer, this video is not for you. I'm going to cover some really basic stuff. But I think you will find that if you spend some time on manual focus, that will be rewarding also to understand how the autofocus works. So let's get right into it. Why would you want to do manual focus? I think there are two answers. One is that some lenses simply don't offer autofocus. If you, like me, like to buy vintage lenses to save some money and get some pro glass for on a budget. This lens, for instance, the 50mm 1.2 Nikkor, doesn't have any uh, autofocus at all. It's a manual focus lens, and many good lenses actually are. That's one reason. The other reason is if you want to be in full control of what is in focus, then you will need to, to use manual focus. Otherwise, the camera will make that choice. And uh, you don't know really if, if what part of the, your subject that is will, will come in focus. So for these two reasons, I think manual focus could be, could be relevant. Also, I think there's a little side uh, benefit, in the, if I can call it like that, that when you understand how, you're man, how to manually focus, you also understand how the automated focus works. I will come back to that towards the end of this video. So what is a focal plane and what it is that happens when you, when you turn, when you turn the, the, the focus here? You can think of the focal plane as a big umbrella. I have one here. I hope you can, you can see it. That as, as you turn the focus ring, then what happens is that the umbrella moves back and forth closer to or further away from your subject. As soon as it sort of touches your subject, then you will see that your subject becomes really, really sharp. There is some forgiveness called depth of field where the subject will be sharp, you know, a little bit before and a little bit after the, the focal plane. Actually, the subject will appear sharp, but let's ignore that for now. Just think of this as one big umbrella that you push back and forth. So that is basically what's going on. And there is only one focal plane because there's only one lens. So no matter how advanced a camera you got, it still only has one focal plane. It can only have one plane in, in focus, so to speak. So when, when you focus, you can, of course, uh, just look in the viewfinder and see whatever you see is sharp and basically turn turn your camera to see and when it is sharp and then then you're you're good to go and you can push the shutter there is some help to be found though in the in in the, your camera first of all your camera has a, a little scale here on the when you dial uh, on the lens or to turn on the lens you will see that infinity that's a sort of a tilted eight uh, that's one extreme and the other end of the scale you will have in this case the minimal focal distance which is half a meter i don't know if you can see that but that is right here half a meter so these are the two extremes on this particular lens on your lens it may be different but but uh, typically in that range, half a meter is, is not a, an uncommon uh, minimum focal distance. So, of course, if you can see how far it is to your, to your subject, then you can, you can start out if you're shooting, for instance, the landscape, then infinity is a good place to start. If you're shooting a flower, then the other end of the scale is a good place to start. However, if you're not comfortable with just seeing through the viewfinder and see whether your subject is sharp, in the, there is a little bit of help to be found in your, in your camera's viewfinder. Bottom left, you will find something that looks like this, I hope. <laughs> it, but it's basically two triangles and a circle. And what it means is that if, if you have the to your left signal on, then your focal plane is not close enough to your subject. If it's the round that is shown, then you are in focus. And of course, the other end, then over here, then you have pushed your focal plane too far. You're sort of past your subject. In the beginning, I couldn't really understand these graphics. I, I found it hard to figure out how does that work. It turns out, I think, that if you, if you turn it mentally in your head, right, that is, if you turn it 90 degrees, right, you will see that what actually happens is that now, you, if you imagine this umbrella, we're pushing back and forth, 
you're pushing your focal plane in this direction and then all of a sudden it makes sense because now the arrow shows you the way you need to push uh, your focal plane so if it's the left one you need to push it closer to your subject if it's the right one you need to push it further back and if it's the circle of course then you're you're spot on that's that's uh, I think a little good thing mentally to turn it like that, then it's much easier to remember. Another thing is that when you shoot in, ma in manual focus, uh, I think the only way you can do that, I'm not sure, but I always shoot in single point focus mode where I have a little, a little dot I can move around on the screen using the, this, uh, this command wheel, I think it's called, right here. And by pushing that, little uh, point around, I can actually select where it is I want the electronics to tell me whether I'm in focus or not. Sometimes, the, if, especially in low light, but also in general, it can be a little bit difficult for the camera to find where it is that, that the focus is and not is, and, and it will sort of hunt, or you can see the electronics is not sure what's going on. You can help it a little bit if you find a point a high contrast point, meaning somewhere where the transition from very bright to very dark, or the other way around, of course, is is happens in a very short while. Then, if you put your fo focus point on that transition, then you're helping your camera. Because I think I'm not an expert on the camera, but I think it looks for contrast to determine uh, the where the focus point should be. If you want to shoot something that's very close to you and uh, you have it so close to you that you actually reach the minimal focal distance of the lens, meaning that the lens, if you get too close, the lens simply can't focus. So you have to move away in order to get uh, the, the lens to focus. The minimal focal distance is the distance that is the, sh the shortest distance where you can get things sharp. If you are at that length, uh, for instance, because you're shooting flowers or stills or products or whatever, a little tip for you if you're shooting manual is turn the focus all the way to one extreme. In this case, it's half a meter. And then instead of turning the focus ring, rock back and forth with the camera uh, until you find the focus point. That is much easier because then you also know that you are up. You will get as close to your subject as the lens will allow. So rock back and forth and find the, the focus rather than, than turning uh, the focus ring. So before you start shooting, you need to check if your lens has autofocus on or not. If it does, then it's important that you switch off the autofocus uh, while, before you start shooting in manual mode. It is so that in the old days when lenses did not have the motor built into them, the motor was actually built into the camera body and there's a little metal thing here that sticks out and that actually drives a screwdriver uh, you can say autofocus so that it fits into here and sort of drives the lens so you can see here as i'm turning the screwdriver the lens the focus uh, starts turning so that's how, actually how it works and the motor down here you can switch that off there is a little button down here called manual focus or just m for manual and af for autofocus and what happens is that if you switch that one to manual then you can see this little split here jumps in and out and you need to make sure that one is out if you're shooting with an autofocus lens otherwise you may hurt the motor i will show you that so don't do what i'm about to do i'll just do, do that to illustrate but here you can see make sure your lens is in manual mode if you have a lens that does not have the autofocus capability, like the 50mm 1.2 here, it has nothing at all here at the bottom. I believe it doesn't even have uh, some CPU contacts, but you can see there's no screwdriver here. So there's no, no need to worry if you don't have autofocus. Make sure if you want to shoot in, in manual mode that you don't have the autofocus on. Otherwise, when you turn the ring out here, I'm doing this very carefully because right now I'm actually hurting the motor in the camera body. And you can see I have to use, maybe you can't see, but I have to use a lot of force. 
as soon as I switch to manual mode, it's, it's much more easy to move. So if you find that your focus, manual focus, is very, very tight and difficult to move, then do yourself a favor and check that you have switched to manual mode down here. Finally, I will say to you that if you want to go for shooting with manual focus, start out with some test shots or some, some sessions where it's not important to you if, if your results become good or not, and slowly build uh, your trust in and your capabilities with regard to focus manually. It is, of course, a discipline where, where uh, you, you can't really focus. You have to be fantastic good if you want to focus on something that's fast moving. So sports and, uh, and the wildlife, I would imagine, would never use manual focus. They will always rely on their autofocus systems. But if you're shooting something that's more still, I think you will be happy to, to learn how to use manual focus because it will give you more control. It will teach you a little bit more about photography. And when you come back to your autofocus system, then you will understand a little bit better how that works. And speaking of the autofocus system, my last remark is that I, I didn't really understand this and maybe it's just, you know, <laughs> me being slow. But no matter how advanced an autofocus system you have in your camera, I have the Fujifilm X-T3 and it can do, you know, impressive things with the face recognition and all of these things that, that it can help me autofocus uh, uh, in, in very clever ways. But it is still what is going on when, when it's working. All the electronics still just control, you know, this focal plane being pushed back and forth until it, it reaches uh, whatever subject it is it has chosen to be in focus. So I think that's why I, I like manual focus because it's still, it's still the same thing that happens in the lens from a more physical perspective. All the electronics that control the focal plane or the selection of the focal plane where that should be, there's artificial intelligence and you know more and more computing power in a more modern camera. But at the end of the day, when it has to react and decide what to do, then it's still the mechanics in the lens that uh, that works exactly the same way when you when you turn it like this, or if you have some very advanced electronics to do it for you. Okay, that's it. That's what I had prepared. That's all I know about manual focus. That's why it became a short video. Uh, please let me know what you think of manual focus. Is it something for you? Or do you think that autofocus is simply so wonderful that you can't live without it? Uh, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, as always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.